let us discuss this theorem. This is a very interesting theorem. So in this theorem, what we have, we have two matrix spaces x d and y d dash. F is a function which is defined from x to y, right? So what we have to prove, we have to prove that this function f is continuous on x if and only if this condition will satisfy. So as I told you earlier, if we have if and only if condition, you can consider it as an equivalent definition of continuous function. Okay, so several definitions we already discussed. Let us add one more definition in our list. Okay, so if and only if part is there. So we will assume one part, we will prove second part. After that, by assuming second part, we will prove the first part. So let us start the proof. First of all, I'm assuming this is continuous function. So assume that, assume that f is continuous on x. So let me draw all these things here so we can easily understand what is happening here. So we have two matrix spaces. This is matrix space x d and this is y d dash. Okay, and we have a function f from x to y. Here a is a basically subset of x. A is subset of x. So here I will write we have a is subset of x. So if you take image of a, if you take image of a, it will be a subset of y. Okay. So f of a will be here. f of a will be here. Right. So if I take its closure, closure part we have already seen in last trimester. Okay. Closure means closure of a means a union a dash a together with all its limit points that is called closure of a. So see implies I will say f of a bar is a close subset of y okay. So in previous semester we have already seen if you take closure 101 percent it is close set. So if we are taking closure of f of a so it will be a close subset of y okay. So see what is the given information or the thing which we assume f is continuous. So equivalent definition of continuous function says if you have any close set in y, its inverse image is close in x. Same result we have seen for open set also. But here we have a close set. This is we have one close set in y. If it's continuous, so its inverse image will be close in x. So I will write implies f inverse of f of a bar is close in x. We can write it because if it's continuous, getting if it's continuous, so that's why it is possible. I'm calling it as statement number one. It's very, very, very important thing. Okay, let us go further. Clearly, we can write one thing. f of a subset of f of a bar any subset is subset of its closure it's obvious thing getting after that what will i do i am going to shift f on that side we have f here if you shift it there we will have f inverse so that's why a subset of f inverse of f of a bar after that what will i do i will take closure of both sides so there is one result if a subset of b a bar subset of b bar so because of that this set is subset of this one. So if you take closure of both sides, we will have the same relation. So therefore, a bar subset of f inverse of f of a bar whole bar. Okay. But see, basically the set which we have got here, we have already said it is close set. You remember if set is close a is equal to a bar, I need to write the statement here. Okay. See, uh, a is close we have already seen huh? if and only if a is equal to a bar. So this is the result we have seen. So this set is close getting the this set is close which we have got here. So if you take its closure, we will have the same set. So that's why we can write implies a bar subset of f inverse of f of a bar. So this bar will get vanish getting after that. What will I do? f inverse is there, I will take it back to this side. That means if f inverse will come here, we will have the original f. So therefore, by taking this f back to this side, so we will have f of 
a bar subset of f of a whole bar getting the point so basically we had shifted f on that side we had got f inverse but now we are taking that f inverse back to this side so we have f of a again f of a bar so in this way we proved this part that means for half part is done getting so by assuming f is continuous we have proved this condition so now we have to assume this thing and we have to prove that f is continuous on x make a screenshot of it then we will go further okay so converse part in converse part we have assumed this thing and we have to prove that function f is continuous on x so now we know several definition of continuous functions epsilon delta definition we have using open set also g is open in y f inverse g is open in x that condition we have closed set also for f is closed in y f inverse f is closed in x then also we can declare f is a continuous function so several definitions we have so out of that we are going to use that definition of closed set to prove this thing uh, for f is continuous okay so let us take one closed subset of y let f subset of y be a closed set okay so i am taking a closed subset of y so we have set f which is a closed subset of y so simply we have to prove that its inverse image is closed subset of x then yes we have done that f is continuous okay so see implies f inverse of f is subset of x so if you take its inverse image we will have f inverse of f it will be here right so we have to yeah basically it is subset of x but we have to prove that it is a closed set okay so see this is a subset of x i am calling it as a so let a is equal to f inverse of f which is subset of x i am calling simply huh? it has a then by assumption okay it is true for any subset of x no so by assumption what can we write so therefore by our assumption our assumption says for any subset of x we have this thing so let us do that so therefore f of a bar but what is my a this one so i can write f inverse of f bar okay subset of f of a means f inverse of f whole bar okay so this f and f inverse we cannot cancel because it has a bar okay we cannot cancel directly but see f and f inverse we can easily cancel here since both of them have a common bar so inside that bar we can cancel those things so therefore f of f inverse of f whole bar subset of f bar but assumption says f is a closed set we have taken f is a closed set so if any set is closed we can say both of them are equal f bar and f both of them are same so this is one of the definition of closed set so what we have basically let me write that thing here so f of f inverse of f bar subset of f right now i'm going to shift this f on that side then it will be f inverse so therefore f inverse of f bar subset of f inverse of f did you notice this thing both sets are same simply it has a bar there is no any bar i will call it as this is 2 clearly clearly f inverse of f subset of f inverse of f bar actually this is obvious thing any set is subset of its closure so that's why this set is subset of its closure and here we have got its closure is also subset of this set so that means it is just like this a subset of b b subset of a that's why both of both sets are equal we can say so here i also i can say therefore f inverse of f from 1 and 2 i am writing f inverse of f bar so that means set and its closure both of them are equal that means this set should be closed set if closure and given set are same so this is definition of closed set so therefore f inverse of f is close in x yes we have done we started with any close set in y and we proved that yes its inverse image is also close in x so this is one of the definition of continuous function so that's why we can declare yes f is continuous on x so therefore f is continuous on x that's it proof is over you can make a screenshot of it then stop thank you bye bye